Hallelujah. Good morning. How's everybody this morning? You guys look good. You have smiles on there. I don't know the ones watching behind the camera there, but you guys have smiles. I think mostly have smiles. Yeah. So thank you so much for watching, for being here. This morning I have a message that uh, the Lord uh, uh, downloaded, like, like I share many times. I can't share a message without, it has to, be, it, it, God knows my heart. I can't share a message. It has to come from Him. So you can be refreshed to know that I hear from God. And most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, sometimes it's teaching from others' notes. But most of the time it comes from downloads of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord wanted me to share this message this morning. It's to his church, to his followers, and it's called Comfort My People. The Lord wants to comfort us this morning. He wants to comfort me. And that I believe that this message will help you and give you tools to be able to be comforted in the Lord. Amen. In the times we're living in right now, we sure need some comfort. So I heard the Spirit say, comfort my people, comfort my people. And so I went on my Bible search and I found it in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 1. It says, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. So God uh, wants us to be comforted. How does comfort come? Uh, so I'm going to be sharing that this morning. I'm going to give you a tool that's most essential in the time that we live in. Uh, if not, it's, it's something that every one of us need to apply in our life. So we see again in the same chapter of Isaiah, chapter 40, uh, Jesus, share, uh, it talks about Jesus. So Jesus is our comforter, or the Holy Spirit is our comforter. But in Isaiah chapter 40, we can see where God is going with this, where Isaiah was actually declaring what Jesus would bring, or what the Holy Spirit would bring. So in verse 11, it says, He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will carry the lambs in his arms. Holding them close to his heart, he will gently lead the mother sheep with their young. So God, by the Holy Spirit, wants to do that to us in our walk with him. So this is, when Isaiah spoke that, he spoke that to the church. He spoke that to the followers of Jesus. He shared right there, pen in ink, is, is about Jesus Christ. Jesus, Jesus says, take my yoke. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So all along, when you have something in your heart, when you need to com be comforted by, your, by, by something, God is there to comfort you. He's the comforter. Amen? And so uh, uh, just like Isaiah who was a messenger speaking on God's behalf, I am here today to bring comfort for your behalf, for whoever is listening. I just pray that God, the Holy Spirit, will go through that camera, go through your heart this morning, everybody here listening and everybody out there, that somehow God's going to encourage you with this, more, this message this morning. And this is my goal. So Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 speaks of our Lord as the God of all comforts. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. So if you need comfort, the best way to have comfort is by Holy Spirit. God comes on the scene. God is not just a book. It's not, it's not just a theology. God is tangible. The Holy Spirit is tangible. You can literally feel the comfort of God. That's why He sends His Spirit. Many don't want to know, they, they think that the Holy Spirit is some, some uh, you know, it, it, it's just some feeling. It's not, it's a person, but the person of the Holy Spirit is there, is your comforter. That's one of the main goal of Holy Spirit, is your teacher, your advocate, your standby. But he's especially there when you need comfort. And you can tap into that comfort anytime you want. And it comes with a price, but that's what it is. God is, wants you to be comforted this morning. He wants you to be comforted. He wants, you, he wants us to, whatever we see on the news, whatever we feel, whatever we, you know, all these things are happening and they're bombarding our mind. You tune into the channels or you're on your social media and you hear all kinds of stuff. 
God is saying to you today, you have to tap into my comfort. Amen. The prophet Micah said this in verse 18. Where is another God like you who pardons the guilt of the remnant, overlooking the sins of his special people? You will not stay angry with your people forever because you delight in showing your, your, uh, your unfailing love. See, comfort comes by the love of God for us. God loves to caress us or by the Holy Spirit. We can't see Him, but He comes. and he com I don't know how it works. All I know is that God, when I need comfort, God comes in the power of the Holy Spirit and hugs me or makes me feel His presence. You know, people say, well, you shouldn't go by feelings. Well, God gives us feelings. We sense we're spirit beings, and we can sense the Holy Spirit. That's why he was given to us. Jesus says, I must go away. If I don't go away, the Holy Spirit can't come. And his disciples were, were really saddened. But Jesus says, hey, listen, I have to go, because if I don't go, my presence that can hug you all the time, that can be with you all the time, will not be able to come. That's what he meant, right? Being a believer is that we have access to God's heart. We have access to the love of God. And he, he comes and he touches us. And so part of his love is to comfort us. We live in a time like no other, and there uh, and there's many pressures coming upon people. There's, you know, but the enemy has been using worldly systems of mind control for years now through the media, education, but God as the ultimate mind control, which comes by Holy Spirit, thoughts, by revealing the love of God and the peace of God coming down from the realms of heaven. Now, you might not know this, but for years now, the enemy has used, been using the media and all kinds of other means to bring us or to bring society under uh, the, the, the doctrines, demonic doctrines, uh, the, the, to make us fall away from God without us realizing people in the world, they don't realize they're being lured. They have been lured. That's why it's important to read the Word because the Word of God will show us, the mind of God will show us how much God loves us, how God wants to protect us, what are the laws not to do, what to do. All these things are made for us to grow and to be strong in things of God. But the enemy has been working full time. And it's it's mind control. I could get into that, but I'm not gonna, but there's all kinds of ways that he does that. But our part is to know that there's a loving God and he wants to comfort us. So in this message, you will learn how to tap into the realms of heaven. Amen. Do you want that this morning? I will show you an, an awesome tool, the best way. You might think it's not a good way, but it is the best way. So in the chaos of the things happening in the world right now, I also hear the Holy Spirit say, saying, I heard him say this, peace be still. Peace be still. So God wants his servants, he wants the church as a whole, his followers, even though there's chaos, be still. God wants you to know he's, he's going to calm the storm of your life. It doesn't matter what goes around you. It's what he, he matters. It's what he can do for you. See, the greatest battle there is, is in our mind. And the enemy knows that. That's why we have to tap into the mind of God, the mind of Christ. The Bible is very clear. We can tap in into the mind of Christ. So God is saying to you today, peace be still. He said this to his disciples who were in a boat facing a huge storm. That's where that scripture comes from Mark chapter uh, 4. But he's saying that to you today. He's saying that to all of us. Even though there's chaos, peace be still. I've got this covered. Meaning, don't get agitated. Don't, don't just learn to rest. My dad used to say this word all the time. Relax. Well, I'm saying to you today, relax, right? And so he is saying the same to you, his followers here today, and those who are watching me online. He's saying to you, just, just enter the peace of God. Just enter the realms of God. So how do you do that? Well, I'll show you. All we need is to stay in faith and close to God's heart. Learning to tap into His love, which comes uh, with His peace. 
and is in a, and is a, uh, that surpass and love that surpasses all understanding. We can't explain that. All I know is that there is a place in God, and I experience it quite often, and many here do too. But the, you, but in the in the things we're going to be facing in the future, God wants us to just learn to tap in that even more. And so it comes as we pray, crying out to God the Father. See, crying to God is a good thing. Crying to God is a is a blessed thing. When things are chaotic, we go. We should go right up to God and cry out to Him. And so His disciples, Jesus, His disciples says, "Teach us to pray." And He gave one key, one key. Sometimes we read that scripture in Matthew chapter six, verse six, and we don't really pay attention what it's saying. Okay. And so uh, it's a place called a secret place. It's called a secret place. It can, find, it can be found in the realms of God, in the heart of God. So in Matthew 6, 6, just one scripture, I could go on and uh, read the whole works of Jesus' prayer formula. But Jesus says this, and I want you to tap into that. I want you to realize what he's saying here. But you, when you pray, go into your room. Okay, and when you have shut the door, that means you're alone with God, just one on one, serious. Pray to your father. Now you have to acknowledge him as your father. He holds everything together. He is there for you. Who is, where is he? Is in the secret place. That's why Jesus said that. There's a secret place in God. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So the formula, if you want to be encouraged and, and strengthen yourself in God, is that you have to apply what Jesus is saying here. You have to go to your secret place. You have to go one-on-one, -on -one, separate yourself from the chaos, and you just go alone. Shutting the door means alone with Him, and you might be facing something that's so serious that you don't know how you're going to get out of it, or you might be looking at tongues on TV, and you don't know when will this end. I am telling you, if you learn to go in the secret place, you're going to be stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. I'm telling you. So I'm going to show you. There's another place. So that's the place where you cry out to God. God hears you and will then fill you up with his love, and presence until nothing else will matter anymore. Do you want that? Until nothing else matters anymore. Because it's that place he will reveal to you that he truly is there for you. You know, you might believe in God, you might, you know, but we all need to know that to know that we know that we know that God is there for us. And the only way you can experience that is to enter the secret place. It's to enter that place where you know you. He comes, and I don't know how that happens, but he just hugs you, and you feel his presence, you feel his love. And when he does that, you feel so powerful, so ready to take on the world. Discouragement, discouragement goes. Fear of the unknown goes. Everything goes. So you will cry out to him, and his tangible presence will come upon you and make you feel strong, and powerful to be fully comforted in life as a believer we all have to experience that for ourselves and that's how i encourage myself that secret place it's called the valley of baca in psalm 84 it explains exactly the same same thing it's the same thing as the chapter 4 james 4 so draw near to God and you will draw near to you. And then it shares how you cry out and you just, uh, you just tell him and declare your sins and all that. You know, in chapter 4, James says, well, it's that same, same place. It's that same place that Jesus, see, everything's tied together in the Word of God. The Word of God is like it, 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 it ties together. And the Holy Spirit is good. Is good. You know, he shares stuff. He shares stuff to you too. Share stuff that are intertwined. 
Well, this verse is intertwined with what Jesus says. Jesus says you have to enter the secret place. So here's how it's happened. In Psalm 84, verse 5, it says, What joy for those whose strength comes from God. So here, uh, in, I, in Psalm, the writer of Psalm, he's, he's trying to draw our attention that we can draw strength. But where can we draw strength? Who have set their minds on pilgrim, pilgrimage to Jerusalem. When they walk through the valley of weeping, or the valley of Baca, I said many times, the greatest experience in my life is when I went there. Because I come back, I'm another person. You will come back, you're another person. You're ready to take on the world. So don't take it lightly when you, you feel like you need to cry out. Go and do it. Go and cry out. Just do whatever. Be alone with God and tell Him everything, uh, whatever uh, sins you're facing. Whatever your the problem, the fear, and all that, you just go on one and just you pour your art upon God. That's the valley of Baca or the valley of weeping. It will become a place of refreshing springs. Tears will come down your cheek. Many times I've experienced that when I face certain things, and I will just cry out to God, and suddenly tears. But they're tears of healing. They're tears that bring springs. Refreshing springs. The autumn rains will close it with blessing. They will continue to grow stronger. And each of them will appear before God in Jerusalem. He's talking here about a place in God. I'm not out of my mind. I know this place exists. And I know it's, 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 it's a place that can only be attend, attained by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Some people say, well, you know, Holy Spirit. Well, the Holy Spirit is our life. He's our life source in our Christian walk. And when you, many, many times in my walk, suddenly I'm minding my own business, then I feel, I feel this tugging. Come along with me. Come along with me. We need to get alone. And, uh, you know, and then I go alone, and then suddenly uh, he starts showing me stuff, whatever. Especially in the past, like lately hasn't been like that. But I'm just saying uh, by experience, right? So the Holy Spirit is that still small voice, right? But know what it says here in verse 6. When they walk through the valley of weeping, it will become a place of refreshing. What does that mean? That means you're going to cry out. That means you're going to weep. You're going to weep before God, but there's a reason why you weep. And God sees that. You know, when our kids weep before us, what do you do? You caress them. You hug them. You bring them close to your heart. Everything's going to be fine. Well, that's what God does. God is a great father. And he wants us to experience that. Meaning when you start crying to me, it will cause me to fill you with my overcoming love and supernatural presence. That's what God's speaking. It's the rivers of living water that Jesus said we would, we would experience. Remember, Jesus says, out of your belly will flow rivers of flowing water. River, uh, Rivers of uh, waters, well, that's what it is. It's the presence of God. It's the Holy Spirit. And then it, it declares in verse 7 that because of, the, of that experience, uh, we will grow stronger. Do you want to grow stronger? The only way to grow stronger is to cry out to God, to be sincere with Him. Whatever you're facing, it's not a bad thing to cry to God. As a matter of fact, he loves that more than anything else. He doesn't love hypocrites. He loves people that are genuine. If you're in sin or you have done something, just go, close the door, whatever you are, and just go one-on-one -on -one with him. I'm telling you, you're going to experience this. You're going to come out on the other side. Wow. I should have done that years ago. So all because we got to a place of brokenness and sincere surrender. I say it again, sincere surrender. You have to be very sincere because God, you know what? God is like a two-headed sword uh, uh, searching the heart. He goes right there and he knows the thoughts and intentions of the heart. God, you can't hide from God. You can, might see something, but God knows exactly. No, 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 that's not. No, but if you're sincere, God will know it. And he's going to go right down deep in your spirit heart. And he's going to go there and he's going to, he knows exactly if you're genuine or if you're not. That's how you get saved. Some might see the sinner's prayer, 
They might say things, you know, it's just words, but for them it's just words. But if they're sincere, they're sincere. God knows exactly they're sincere. And when he sees a person is truly genuine, sincere, ca carrying a repented heart, then God is fine. Now I'm now you're born again. Then he sends his spirit, his spirit opens his uh, your eyes to the uh, spiritual things. You get saved, you're uh, uh, change kingdom. Because of what? Because you become sincere. Sincere, being sincere with God is the most important thing. He hates hypocrites. You know, just don't pretend that you're a Christian. You just and do the the, the thing. You just go. God knows exactly if you're lying or not. He knows that. But God, nothing nothing touches his heart more than when we're sincere with Him and we share our sins and we share our heart. We share our fear because it's okay. God, God understands. You know, now one thing that it's not in my notes, but we have to remember that Jesus lived as a human being. So every temptation that we have, he experienced that. He lived as a human being. He knows how frail a human being is. And he's sitting at the right hand of the Father and he's interceding for us because he knows exactly what we're facing. And he knows how it is to face the enemy daily. And he will he's there to encourage us. Because he lives as a human being. Just like us. I don't know about you, but I encourage myself with that. So, it's by entering the secret place of God's heart that Paul cried out to the Lord three times. Three times Paul says, you know, he was facing a, a thorn in the flesh. Right? And he cried out to God. And what did Jesus say? Jesus says, my grace is sufficient in weakness. Let's go there in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. In verse 7. Unless I should be exalted above measure my, uh, by the abundance of the revelation, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And this is what Jesus uh, replied. My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. What he was saying is, get into my presence. Get into the secret place. My power. And that's how he entered that secret place. You know how he entered that secret place? He cried out to God. Here Paul was crying out to God. So this is a, a very good example of how God is saying, again, proving what I'm trying to share is genuine. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities or his weaknesses that the power of Christ may rest upon me. That's the, that's the, that's, that's the strength that it says in Psalm 84, it's the strength that comes. It's the ability of God to be able to sustain what you're facing. That's what Jesus was trying to tell him. Listen, you're crying out to me and my grace, I'm going to release my grace. It's about my power will be released for you to stand. So then he says, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities in reproaches in needs and persecution and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So what Paul is saying here, okay, what it says here is that he found the, 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 that secret place in God where, you know, uh, persecution, attacks. What, what are we facing today? We're facing all kinds of attacks upon us, right? We're facing all kinds of voices, negative. And so that's exactly what Paul was facing. And Jesus says, you, you have to... You know, it's okay. I give you power to be able to overcome. In the secret place. You enter the secret place. Again, I repeat myself. But you cry out to God just like Paul cried out to God. See, crying out to God is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. As a matter of fact, this is how revival are births. Do you know how revivals are birth? Do you know how, how God hears? It's people that humble themselves, cry out to God, see the sins of humanity around them or their nation, and then boom, 
God sends a move of God. It can only, sometimes it can be birthed by two or three. But they cry out to God. They enter the room, the chamber where God resides and they pray. And suddenly God hears and sees their heart and then he can't take it anymore and he sends a move of God. Because there's people crying out to him in a secret place. They're crying to him. If there's ever a time we need a move of the Holy Spirit, it's now. It's now. I am crying out to God. I says, God, please. We need a move of God. It's chaotic out there. People are facing things that are not good. And I'm not going to go in details. But I'm telling you, if God does not intervene, humanity is in trouble. But I believe in God. And I believe that God will move. And I believe that God is looking for those who want to cry out to him in a secret place and say, God, we need you in our nation. Come and move and come and touch. Come and expose the darkness. Come and deal with all these demonic activity. All these things that are happening in the world right now. Come. We need you, God. And God will hear if we're sincere. But it all starts by going in a secret place. Just like Paul. Paul had to learn a lesson. And that messenger of Satan, whatever that thorn in the flesh was, was you, you couldn't take it anymore. It's something you can't take. It's something that you, it, it weakens you. And it attacks maybe your mind or whatever it was. Whatever it was. All kinds of people have theory. I believe it's the Corinthian church, but I could be wrong. It's carrying all these uh, complainers and whatever. It's, it could be anything. All I know is that this torn of the flesh really affected Paul. And Jesus says, get over it. Get over it. And just tap into my power. I've equipped you for that. And he's equipped the church. If you're a sincere, genuine Christian, born again, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is there for you. You can enter that realm. And so... Uh, so when we are weak, we can become strong as we cry out to God. It's when we are caught in a hard place that we can then enter that place where we truly experience God's heart and love for us as to bring comfort to our soul. Do you want that? I'm telling you, in the times we're, we're entering in right now, you better go in there. You better go there. Because I'm telling you, there's no shame in crying out to God. No shame at all. Only then can we feel the whole whole from inside he fills us he gives us strength to surpass anything any obstacle you feel powerful you feel like a soldier of the cross when you come out of that place you feel like i can take on the world come on devil and then you see uh, people being attacked your fellow brothers and sisters in christ and then because of what you came out of then you start praying for them interceding for them binding and loosing because you came out of that secret place. You came out of that realm that God is. I'm talking about something supernatural here. I'm talking about the realms of God. You might think I'm crazy. I'm not. This is true Christianity. Read your Bible. This is what it says in Ephesians chapter 6. Put on the full armor of God. There are many scriptures I could quote. It's no time to play games. You know, a lot of churches are playing games right now. Don't play games. Don't pretend nothing is happening. Get, get it as a warrior. Become a warrior in the spirit. You might think it's a weird thing. But I'm telling God, give us the Holy Spirit. And the gifts of the spirit haven't stopped, by the way. As some, God still heals today. Still prophesying. Prophesy. Uh, the, all the gifts are still in operation, 100%. Today. But some refuse. Well, it's up to you. I'm telling you, if it wouldn't be for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, I wouldn't even be able to preach here. And so, Satan might think he is winning at times, but he's just playing in God's plan for us. You know, when something happens to you, it's an opportunity. That's why uh, it says, counter all joy. When you enter uh, various trials. Why would he even say that? Well it's because. God allows it. But the devil is entering right spank. In the middle of God's plan. 
He's getting set up. You might not think at that time when you're facing something, but the devil's being set up. So Satan might think he's winning at times, but he is just playing in God's plan for us, causing us to finally call out to him with our old being and entering that place where we are empowered by God. That's how God operates. He allows stuff to show the devil what we're made of because we have Holy Spirit inside of us. All right? I'll show you my true servants. Right now, there's a separation. Did you know that? There's a separation right now. There's a separation who is a genuine believer and who is not a genuine believer. And those who are not genuine believers are well, going to surrender. They're going to allow their lives to be taken over. But those who know their God will do mighty exploit. Those who know their God, they're going to enter in the perfect plan and will of God. And they will do great things for him. It's from the secret place experience that Paul was able to say the following verses. Philippians 3.7 but what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yes, indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of knowledge, of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my, my Lord. For whom I suffered the loss of all things, I count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. What, he was, what is he hinting? He says, I don't care about anything anymore. Is All I want is fellowship with God, fellowship with Christ. I love the, uh, the, the feeling that I feel from his presence. That's what he was literally saying. I've lost. I, I don't care anymore. All I want is Jesus. All I want is his presence. All I want is Christ. This is what Jesus is saying. How did he do that? How did he experience that? He experienced that in a secret place. And be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be conformed to his death. If by any means I may attain the resurrection of the dead. What he was saying is when you get close to God, you feel what he feels. You feel full of him. Many times Paul shared of that realm. Paul had revelation knowledge. Jesus, uh, he, he barely knew Jesus. He saw, probably saw him when he walked the streets. But remember, Paul, Paul had an experience on the road to Damascus with Jesus. That's how he got saved. But then after that, he disappeared for three years. And that three years, some say, some scholar, I believe it was too, that he went in the realms of heaven, or he had downloads from God, from heaven itself, and that's why he was able to pen these things because his experience with God was what I'm trying to share with you, was supernatural. One-on-one -on -one with God, spirit to spirit. And that's how you could pen these things. And that's how he became so strong in things of God because he, he didn't go to an intellectual, uh, intellectual school or Bible school. He, he had lessons of life by the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, that's how I get my lesson. Some might not say, well, you know, you didn't go to Bible school. It's okay to go to Bible school, but I never went to Bible school. The Holy Spirit is moving full time since 1991 and to mentor me and to make me who I am. And I'm still growing in things of God. I'm still laying and learning in things of God. I went to the school of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the best teacher ever. As a matter of fact, people that have too much uh, of edu education, they are kind of a stumbling block for God, the Holy Spirit. Because they will go with their denomination instead of what God wants them to do. And that breaks my heart. But that's another, another thing. So it's only when we face hardship that we can then in turn turn to him fully sold out and then truly experience resurrection power. Do you want that resurrection power? It comes by going to that place. His grace, or you could say his power, is perfected in our weaknesses. It will cause us to feel close to his heart, which will then empower us. See, it's getting close to God's heart that empowers us. Why? Because when we feel his love for us, and we feel his heart, or what is on his heart, then it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's spirit to spirit. Then we know, we know things. I don't know. I can't explain. We just know. I know what offends God, and I know, I know what does not, what makes him happy. How's that? And it only comes by the Holy Spirit. And is also confirming it through his word. 
So somehow this empowerment is also tied with the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I don't know how this works, but all I know is if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, what I'm speaking of, you're going to miss out. But if you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, it seems to work better. So I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit. Most people here hopefully are. Is that what I'm sharing is you have uh, being baptized in the Holy Spirit by the laying of the hands I'm talking of, not being baptized, you know, being baptized in water, I did too, but being baptized in the Holy Spirit. There's the empowerment of God comes. So that is why Jesus first told his followers to tarry in Jerusalem to be endured with power from on high. When the Holy Spirit came in full power over them, they became bold as lions and ch they changed the world around them. You want to change the world around you? Get baptized in the Holy Spirit. If you have already been baptized in the Holy Spirit, another way to be encouraged or comforted is to remind yourself that you do carry that same power to overcome every obstacle. Remember, they changed the world. You know, Peter, that denied Jesus three times, when he got baptized in the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit came in that upper room, they came out of there fully in power. He became another person. He became, not that he was demonic. He became empowered by God. More bold, more in love for God. Right? It came by the Holy Spirit. Let us remember what Jesus says in, in, uh, in John 16. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. He meant that they were now on the winning side because they were his followers. And that with the soon coming of the power of the Holy Spirit, they would have new power to be able to overcome the world system with supernatural endurance and peace from God himself. So going in a secret place is good, but also being empowered by the Holy Spirit is it increases that even more. So when Jesus told his disciples that he's soon leaving this world in John chapter 13, they all became very sad and discouraged. But then he said the following, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. So after saying this, he mentioned that he was going to prepare a place for them in heaven to be with him forever. But he then told them that when the time is ready, that he would receive them to himself so that where he is, there they can also be. What I believe he was saying too, it's twofold. But he says, I have to go. When I go, I'll come back to you. Meaning I will come back to you in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will make me feel real to you. He will show you I will be there. I will never leave or forsake you. All these scriptures are all because of the Holy Spirit. See, we're never alone because the Holy Spirit is always here. So well, well in the Spirit, we can always be in communication with Him all the time. Praise God for the Holy Spirit. If it wouldn't be for the Holy Spirit, I don't, we as a church, we as a believers, we would not be able to operate. But because he's always there, always, always, always. We have a question, he goes full time. You know what he does in my walk, and this is probably different with you, maybe or the same. But I had questions when I first started to serve God. And God, would, he would go to extreme. Either I would, somehow I'm turning a channel and looking at something on TV. I'm on a Christian channel, and the exact question that I had asked, somebody, a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ answered that. Or somebody would give me a book, or lend me a book, or a cassette, or whatever. And so, Holy Spirit is always working full time. And if it wouldn't be for, for Him, we would not be where we are at. He's, he's the one that teaches us. He's the one that communicates stuff with us. So he was speaking of being there in the spirit. If you love me, keep my commandments. In John 14, 15. And I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper. And he, uh, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world, the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. For he dwells with you and it will be in you. That's us. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. A little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live, you will live also. At that day you will know that I am in, the, in my Father and you in me and I in you. So that's the secret place again. See? Do you understand what I'm saying? The secret place is exactly what Jesus says here. 
at that day you will know that I am in my Father, you in me, and I in you. That's the secret place. I just want to put that there because it's a spiritual thing, right? It's not some far, far thing, you know, you know, you know, you go and no, it's in the spirit. We can't see the spirit of God. Then in, in John 14, 26, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Note this what he says here. In the secret place, this is what God says. Or what do he bring? Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Why? Because you learn to enter his presence. You have Holy Spirit to help you. That's why Jesus said that. He says, a peace I live me and you, I'm giving you supernatural peace. This is the comfort of God. You want to be comforted in God? Realize that you have Holy Spirit to bring comfort. Stop listening to negative voice and tap into his heart. And so then he says, you have heard me say to you, I'm going away and coming back to you. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said, I'm going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And he was hinting again at the Holy Spirit. So did you get what I'm trying to say? That secret place when you cry out to God is a place where it's in the Spirit. It's in the Holy Spirit. So we can experience his supernatural peace all the time just by being in the Spirit. In Romans 8, verse 6, in the uh, easy to read version, it says it this way. If your thinking is controlled by your sinful self, there is spiritual death. But if your thinking is controlled by the Spirit, there is life and peace. So we have a choice. In Galatians, it talks, this, it talks about the battle between flesh and spirit. And there's a battle going on. All of us are involved in it. We all have the same thing. We're all human. And the flesh, which is your old nature, or the, uh, Satan himself, will give you negative thoughts. Can make you try to make you think things are not true or trying to make you, you know, whatever, but you have to learn to tap into the Spirit of God. Believe me, there's a fight. It's our choice, it's your choice. It's your choice to enter the secret place. I can't make it to you, I can pray for you after this ser sermon, but only you can do it. You, can, you have to do it at your place, you have to do it one on one with God Himself. Nobody else can do that for you. You decide. You decide which voice you will hear. You decide who's gonna be, who you're going to believe. We decide. So peace and comfort will always come to us when we get into the Spirit. And so it's in the Spirit that you can remind yourself of the promise of God. Reading the Word is very important. It's only in the Spirit that you can remind yourself of the promise of God. So if you want to be comforted, you have to read the Word. If you don't read the Word, you'll barely know anything about God. It's in the Spirit that you can experience the presence of God instantly by worshiping in spirit and truth. So if you want to go in that secret place, one easy way is to worship God, just like we did early this morning. You worship God and you're caught up in the Spirit. God just comes and comforts you. Music was created for God. It's in the Spirit the thoughts of God can come as you pray in a spiritual language. Praying in tongues will bring you in that realm. There's two types of tongues. There's the prophetic. I move in bubbles. But we all have, if you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, believe me, in there is the, the ability to speak in another language. You might not believe that, but it's true. I, I, I pray multiple languages. Sometimes I sing in another language. I sing with tunes. I cry out in tongues. I, I, sometimes I do warfare in tongues. Sometimes I get mad at the devil in tongues. So, so, so anyway, there's all kinds of... It's a language, a spiritual language. It's another subject. But that's a good way to enter the secret place. God... <clears throat> God had our best interest in mind when he sent his spirit so we can feel him and hear, hear him all the time, not leaving us as, uh, as orphans. 
So I want to finish uh, with these scriptures. I could read many scriptures, but I want to bring scriptures to your mind. Because this message this morning is all about being comforted. So I, I just prayed on it, and these, these, these two scriptures came to me. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. So I will have no fear what can mere people do to me. So this scripture for somebody, maybe you're, you're in a financial bound. bound. Well, know what it says here. God in his word himself says, I will never abandon you. If you fear the unknown about where you're going to have your next paycheck or where, believe me, God has it covered. Uh, you know, uh, I could I could speak about somebody's certain situation right now, but I won't. But I'm telling you, we might think God doesn't know, but he knows. All he wants us is us to trust him. And remember that he will he will not he will never abandon us. Then in Romans eight, and I love Romans eight because it covers most things that as a believer what we have access to. And I believe that Romans eight, the the, the ending of Romans eight is far probably the most encouraging letter. Well, there's many others, but I'm just saying you will know what I'm saying when I read it. And we believers also groan even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory. For for our bodies, uh, uh, for we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as his adopted children, including the new bodies he had promised us. So I just want to read that part too because what happens is that we have, we can believe one day soon, Jesus is going to come and get his true followers. And we're going to be, we're going to have spiritual bodies. In the last trump, the dead in Christ will rise first and those who are alive and remain will rise up with Christ and to always be with the Lord. That's in Thessalonians. It could be, it's also in Corinthian. But, but the, the rapture of the church is coming and this is what Paul was hinting at. So I don't know about you, but I encourage myself to know that one day we are all flee. The wrath of God, which is the seven-year tribulation period that are very are coming very soon upon the earth. We don't know how long still we have. So, but uh, so we were given this hope when we were saved, and if we already have something we don't need no, to hope for, if we already have something we don't need to hope for it. Anyway, what he's saying is that's our hope. But if we look forward to something we don't yet have, we must wait patiently and confidently. He's speaking about the rapture. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. You don't know what to pray for? Pray in the Spirit. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for us and believers in harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and we are called according to his purpose for them. For God knew his people in advance and he chose them to become like his son so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. I don't know, but if it's to me, that's an encouragement because I belong to God. You belong to God. You're His prized possession. You're we're called. If there is a a way of encouraging you in the Lord, that should be it. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since He did not spare even His own Son, but gave Him up for us all, won't He also give us everything else? Meaning, won't he take care of us? Right? If you need to encourage yourself, just, just go to that scripture. Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one, for God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one, for Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting at the place of honor at right, God, uh, God's right hand, pleading for us, praying for us. God, can, uh, can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? 
Now, when it says love here, it, it, it means that love that can feel, not just know about, you can feel, okay? Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scripture says, for your sake we are killed every day, we are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. What is Paul trying to see? He's trying to see the love of God makes you feel strong. That's, the love of God can be felt in the secret place. Really, this is what he's trying to say. We can, we can overcome anything. And I am convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angel nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus. Note here, in Christ, in Christ Jesus. Sometimes we read that, we don't understand what it's saying. In Christ, in the Spirit. So you might be facing anything. I don't know who I'm talking to, you guys here. You know, I see you once a week at times, some and most, a lot of you. I don't know what you're facing. But one thing's for sure, God's got your back. God wants the best for you, and he wants you to enter that secret place where you can enter his heart, and you can feel his heart love for you. And only then can you, it make you feel strong. And then Jesus said this, so don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? Okay? These things dominate thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and live righteously, and He will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. I'll leave you with this, what I just read. Now, I want you to take very good note of this. Don't worry about tomorrow. Many are worried about tomorrow. Don't worry about, it's okay today. Just go one day at a time. So don't worry about tomorrow. Jesus speaking here. For tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. So that's how we have to face life right now. That's how we have to face everything. God loves us. God's got our back. And God wants you if you're facing something. I don't know who I'm speaking to on, online. I don't know. Some might be watching this on YouTube way yonder in the future. But God, God is not in time. And the Lord wants you to know that you can enter that place of comfort. Remember, this sermon today is about being comforted in the Lord. And no man's people can pray for you when you leave, like the people here when you leave, or you know, people can pray for you. But it's all it's all up to you. It's all up to us. It's all up to us. You know, if we we walk a life of defeat, that's that's not God's problem. It's God's problem, but it's not God's uh, will. It's not God's fault. It's us. When we 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 do the pity thing and all that, we God wants us to cry to Him. He's the source of life. He's the one that can refresh us. He's the one who wants to give us springs of life. He's the one who wants to give us hugs, feel His presence. We decide. James says, draw close to God and He will draw close to you. You do the first step. I have to do the first step. Things are going bad in my life. I need to approach God and dump on Him. And God will dump on me. Right? That's how it works. So hopefully this message has encouraged you uh, this morning. I know to me, uh, I'm, I'm still learning this process. But uh, in the times we're entering, and believe me, uh, it could become more chaotic before it gets better. You need to enter that place. We all need to enter that place. That place where God wants us to be.
one-on-one -on -one with him. And uh, for those who have never received Jesus as, Christ, uh, as Lord and Savior, I might be speaking to people. You might think, well, I'm a Christian because I was born. Uh, my, oh, my parents are this and this, this denomination. But uh, believe me, you're not a Christian if you've never received Jesus as your Lord. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And all we have to do is to believe that message. And it's called the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus died and rose again the third day. And, he, and then he sat at the right hand of the Father. And uh, he wants us to be born again. Born again is not joining a church. Born again is the experience of receiving Jesus as your Lord. I'm telling you, if you think you're a believer and you have never, you don't walk for him, you don't live for him, then you're not the Christian. You need to decide on your own. You need to call on God himself, and he will answer. So I challenge you to do that. I'm going to, you just, you know, sometimes I tend not to want to pray the sinner's prayer. Because I want people not to see that it's a formula. But you, all you have to do is say, God, I need you. Lord Jesus, come in my life. I want you. I want to live for you. And if you're sincere, God will show you. You're going to experience what I have been saying. Hopefully you do that. God bless. Thanks for listening. listening. Thanks, you guys, for being here this morning. And have a good week. And remember, learn to tap into the secret place of God's heart. Amen.